I'm going to be talking about how the religion called atheism is actually destroying human freedom. That's right. Atheism is a religion and that's right. It does not liberate the mind. It enslaves it. I highly recommend David Icke's work on that topic, who has done a great job in explaining that uh, the metaphysical reality goes far beyond the physical reality, is much wider. And this is what the world of occultism incorporates. Okay. The definition of occultism is that we are looking into the unknown or unseen world, the largely unknown or the largely unseen. And that exists in the unseen realm far more than in the seen realm. So, so that it involves the incorporation of a much wider and larger worldview and a more complexified worldview than that which is ordinarily taken by the average human being. And the average human being defaults to one of two speeds. They either look at the simplicity that religion offers them because their minds are so simple they can't operate on any higher level, or they say, I'm going to dump all religion and become an atheist and say there's no such thing as spirit or consciousness at all. And both of those are childish worldviews that don't incorporate the totality of reality. They haven't looked far enough into what's really taking place in our world. Drinking a shallow draft from the Perian Spring, at which point you will become brain imbalanced and intoxicated. And only drinking extremely deeply from the stream of knowledge will sober you again. Okay? And that's where most people fall short. They don't go deep enough in their knowledge and in their understanding. And that's certainly what scientism promotes. Here's uh, George Collin with a couple of words about religion. Well, atheism is a belief, so I don't, I'm not an atheist, because that's something you have atheism to believe. Atheism also makes a definitive statement. There is no, you, yeah. what are you, an agnostic? Uh, not, well, you know, I mean, somebody would define me that way, but I don't think it's important to know yourself? the distinction. I'm just a person who thinks someday you could find out, and I would know that, that whoever was there judging me, and I'm sure there's no one like that, but if there was someone judging me, then I'd be fine. So I don't even think about where, you know what my brother calls it? The big electron. Just the big electron. Something is humming. So all you need is a good hum. A good hum. I don't mean, you know, the bad kind. Uh, just a good hum. Yeah. And, and so um, I think Jesus probably lived. He's probably a, a live guy. But uh, I got an interview with him in my book, by the way. You want to read that because he tells everything. You know, they ask him, is there a heaven? He says, not only is there a heaven, we got a heck. Heck and hell. Heck, heaven, heck, and hell. Yeah, and, and What's no, heck? Heck is not as bad as hell. <laughs> Similar. <laughs> so, not that I could ever give enough evidence for anybody to accept it. So I decided I'm not going to try to push that on people. I'm giving you vistas and areas and avenues of research to go down, which there are endless. Once you start there, you can go into endless other areas of research. I've given you three, four names so far, actually five. Okay. Where you could research for the rest of your life on the five names I've dropped in this one show. Okay. But if you think, you know, everything, then, you know, keep living how you're living and expect a different result, which you've never gotten and never will. Atheism is actually a religious belief that is completely inconsistent with the scientific method. Now, this is not me saying this. This is a Templeton Prize winning scientist in physics saying this. Okay. I honestly think uh, this is uh, Marcello uh, Gleiser. He said, I honestly think atheism is inconsistent with the scientific method. Atheism is a categorical statement that expresses belief in non-belief. That's a circular argument. I don't believe even though I have no evidence for or against, period. That's what an atheist says. It's a declaration. But in science, we don't really do declarations. We say, okay, you can have a hypothesis and you have to have some evidence, uh, 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 some evidence for or against or for that. An agnostic would say, I have no evidence for God, but on the other hand, an, ag an agnostic would also acknowledge no right to make a final statement about something he or she doesn't know about. So if you don't have evidence for the c definitive non-existence of God, just saying that you don't believe in it is a circular argument. It's saying, I don't believe, I believe in a non-belief. Okay. It's a circular argument. And he concludes by, uh, with the, in this statement with the adage, the absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. Okay. 
which is an eternally true statement. Just because you don't have evidence to support the existence of something right now doesn't mean that it definitely doesn't exist. It doesn't mean that it does exist either, okay? But just saying that you don't believe that something exists is not proof that it doesn't exist. And I would argue we have more proof of the existence of a creator through the observable effects of the laws that have been put into place, okay? So, moving to the next slide. Natural law is a science. It is not a belief system. And again, I make no bones about the fact that 90% of people will not accept this, are not going to understand it, will not look deeper into it, will just say, you're wrong, you don't know what you're talking about, I do, and, sh and shut it off. So guess what? If that's your approach, I don't care what you think. Do that. Stay dwelling in your ignorance, thinking that from the position of the low level of knowledge that you have that you can somehow solve the problems of the world when there is no way of doing that without growing spiritually and understanding the wider laws that are applying and active in nature if you don't understand those laws you are going to be going blind through life and you're going to be unconsciously co-creating the shared reality that we all live in and this is what 99.9% .9 if uh, that's probably a very low estimate of people in the world are doing they're co-creating completely blind because they have no knowledge they're in total deep ignorance of the actual laws of nature that are operating all around them natural law is a science of morality that can be directly observed in the 3d world you don't have to believe in anything there are no uh, religions no rituals no uh, practices or beliefs that you have to subscribe to to understand the existence of natural law at all. The evidence of the existence of natural law is the resultant state which humanity receives as a direct consequence of its aggregate behavior, or in other words, the human condition itself. And yes, there is a correlation in this instance between manifestation and causation. Okay? Correlation and causation do perfectly align in this instance. In many cases, they don't, but in this instance, they absolutely do. All you have to ask yourself, is the human condition freedom? Are we free? Are human beings free? Are we free to exercise our rights on restraint? Or are we being stopped from doing that? Are we living in a perpetual state of duress, which is the continued threat of violence being conducted upon us if we don't comply with the commands of government, the ruling class? That's the human condition, duress, enslavement, violence, coercion. It isn't freedom. And when we understand that the law of freedom has the quantifiable effect, that aggregate freedom is directly proportional to aggregate morality, meaning as a society behaves more morally, they become more free. Then we understand that natural law is actually in effect by the consequence that we have received societally. Are we an enslaved species? Yes, we are. Therefore, we cannot be behaving morally as a species. Period. The end. That is how the law of morality works in nature. And it is an effect. It does exist. And it has an effect upon our behavior. Whether you like it or not or understand it or not, there's nothing you could do about it. No more than you could change the, you know, uh, the way a, a galaxy works. Okay. You're not powerful enough to change those laws, nor are you powerful enough to remove the operation of natural law, the moral laws of consequence, of behavioral consequence. You cannot take them out of effect any more than you could put them in effect. The consequences will be manifested in the human, into the human condition either way as a direct result of the moral quality of the aggregate of aggregate human behavior, collective human behavior. We collectively reap the result of the behavior that we collectively sow. So the law of freedom is simply this. Aggregate morality is directly, I'm sorry, aggregate freedom is directly proportional to aggregate morality. That's what that that um, equation written right there at the bottom of this slide is the sum of the all of the human freedom that is experienced on earth by all of the human beings on this planet is directly proportional to the sum 
of the quality of moral behavior of all of the human beings acting on this planet. The sum of freedom is proportional to the sum of morality. It is eternally this way and can never be any other way. And the, the problem is, see, this is, this is revelation, folks. That's what this is. When you deep penetrate deeply enough into nature itself, into the way nature operates and works, this is what will happen eventually. If you stay true to the study, if you stay true to the discovery process, you will penetrate it and go beyond the veil and then it will be revealed unto you how it actually works. That's what enlightenment is. It's knowledge about how the laws of morality work to bring us the consequences of our free will behavior in the form of the experience that we undergo collectively here on earth and anywhere else in the universe for that matter. But human beings are so deeply entrenched in ego and ignorance that they refuse to even look into it to any extent, to any, forget any penetrating extent. They won't look into it from a cursory extent. These aren't even really people, man. It's a CIA plot to make you think malls are good.